Hi, and welcome to Carvers. Today we are going to talk about the brand new Spang G9. Before we start the video please subscribe to the channel and click on the notification bell in order not to miss the latest car news. Spang finally unveiled its long-awaited large SUV, the Spang G9. A substantially big SUV has seemed to be missing from the Spang lineup for years. The Spang G9 is a five-seat SUV with a class-leading back seat and cargo room, yet having a respectable-sized wheelbase. The Spang G9, which is on the sports side of the model lineup, has styling similar to that of the P7. Uncertain of the gay's exact position, the P5 unquestionably belongs on the family side. The Spang G9 is a long-nosed, slick, and attractive SUV that is modeled around the P7 sports sedan's well-known appearance. The P7 has, up until this point, been the Spang range's most distinctive exterior design. As in Spang, the G9 features a lightsaber-shaped LED bar running from the bottom to the hood. Due to the addition of the LiDAR units, the G9's darkened headlight cluster is larger than the P7's. The Spang G9 sports a lower black fascia similar to the P7, however on the SUV, it is contrasted with some white accents. The P7's bottom-to-top black fascia, which was an extremely flimsy attempt to give the vehicle a cleaner appearance, was never something I liked. An illusion that swiftly dissipated as you got closer. Here, the G9 seems more sporty while still maintaining its sleek, aerodynamic appearance. The site uses Spang's customary pop-out handles and is generally easy to navigate. The wheels on our model were Cyclone multi-spoke with a fake center lug, and from a distance of 2 meters, they are very stunning. Just to highlight the sporty intention, the cabin is pushed back behind the long nose. The only information provided by Spang is that it would go from 0 to 100 km per hour in less than 4 seconds, which is certainly fast enough. The G9 is the only vehicle with rear LED tail lights that wrap around the back corner and extend into the side profile. They have a strong light bar that is matched by some patterning on the underside. Speaking of spilling over, the front lightsaber extends to the side, with the lead dar and headlights clearly visible. This shouldn't come as a surprise as the lead exterior designer confirmed the lead dar units are positioned to maximize their field of view FOV. According to Spang, this is preferable to a single roof-mounted unit. The Spang G9 includes an auto-deploying tow bar in addition to integrated roof spoilers for owners who are more daring. This feature is apparently targeted at upcoming European buyers. In terms of aesthetics, the Spang P7 has already established itself as a sort of EV icon in China. Personally, I'm expecting the updated P7 to emulate the Spang G9's upgrades. It has a dashing, sophisticated appearance. My initial impression. Since the interiors of each model up to this point have varied greatly, it is quite difficult to discern. While the outside clearly mimics the Spang P7, the interior is once more entirely original. That's not to say it's a bad interior, far from it. The materials are a step beyond the P7, with plush Nappa leather seats that you burrow into and seat comfort that is just as good in the back as it is in the front. But because it doesn't have a distinct brand interior design like its rivals, it could come off as being quite generic. With the exception of the pop-up dash tweeter speakers, the interior has undergone almost total revision. The front seats provide heating, ventilation, and massaging capabilities, which are now practically typical at this level. I should note that based on the images, I had anticipated the same thin steering wheel featured in the P7, thus I was pleasantly pleased by how comfortable the upgraded, slightly smaller wheel felt in the Spang G9. This statement applies to every touch point in the cabin, which is made of good soft leather and imitation leather as well as respectable metal. As you go further, the metal is replaced by harder plastic trim and metal that looks like plastic. However, if it appears that I'm moaning, I'm not. The material quality has greatly improved, and my prodding, shaking and pulling convinced me that the interior is far superior to the P7. After meeting with the lead interior designer, they would want to draw attention to the Fibonacci speaker grills or the seat detail design that was inspired by the Canton Tower. But let's be honest, all that matters is how it feels and how well it is put together. In the corner console, there is two wireless phone charging pads. A center console storage unit with a two-way opening and a few push-down cup holders that are better built. There is room for a handbag or other bulky objects, as well as USB ports and 12 volts outlets, under the center console. What you won't find on the center console are buttons. The two 19.96-inch center touchscreens are used for everything. Fortunately, you can easily swipe or push the screens between the driver and passenger, giving either of them access to everything. The quality is the same in the back, with plush Nappa leather seats and aluminum contact points. On higher versions, the back seat will have heating, 
cooling, and massaging features. However, an electric reclining feature is present in every model. Rear passengers have plenty of room to stretch out, thanks to the reclining feature as well as the absurdly large leg and headroom. The front seat can be moved out of the way for more space and comfort by the passenger behind the front passenger using controls on the front seat. The Spang G9's rigid 5-seat arrangement allows for a massive 660 liters of boot space, which is lavish given that I've been in a lot of 3-row SUVs lately. There is, according to Spang, space to fit 4 golf bags back there. Additionally, it has a flat bottom and, when equipped with air suspension, will drop onto its back axle to facilitate loading. Evidently, Spang is well known in China for its emphasis on Otis capabilities. The Spang G9 is expected to eventually be an Otis start to park system. We're not sure exactly what that means at the moment. However, Spang asserts that it will be able to easily transition from driving in parking lots and gridlock traffic to city and highway NGP. Although we are aware that Spang is actively testing city NGP on public roads, we don't think it will be available when the Spang G9 is delivered. The Spang G9 is reported to be able to predict road conditions and modify the suspension as necessary to enhance ride comfort. This is made possible by the air suspension, CDC, and LIDAR. Again, we expect to experience this on our drive the following month. The new immersive media platform known as Zopra is the Spang G9's other main area of concentration. It is a 2250 watts, 28 speaker system with Dyn Audio as the audio tie in partner and Dolby Atmos 7.1.4. Spang asserts in addition to ambient lighting, air conditioning, in-car scent, and seat vibrations, Zopra is a 5D immersive experience. My butt was really bewildered when it forcefully vibrated while someone on screen knocked on a door after seeing the demo film, which appeared to have the seat vibrations set to the maximum. I've been told that the demo showed off the system's capabilities at their most extreme. Additionally, the seat vibrations were at a respectable level of engagement while listening to some bass-heavy music. There is a lot more to learn about the infotainment screen, but because of time constraints, we will have to wait to express a fully comprehensive opinion. The 4-Zone AI Voice Assistant from Spang, which is still the most responsive voice command system I've used, deserves praise, nevertheless. It has perfect comprehension of my imperfect Mandarin. Additionally, it appears to recognize and carry out commands twice as quickly as any other system. Everyone in the Spang G9 can call the voice assistant, with the exception of the middle back seat. The 480 kilowatts charging system from Spang, along with the 800 volts architecture of the Spang G9, enables a 200 kilometers CTLC range in five minutes. However, in my opinion, the 10 to 80 percent charge every 15 minutes is what actually slows down the charge speeds in comparison to conventional refueling. We already know that the Spang G9 will include two batteries: a 78.2 kilowatt hours LFP pack and a 98 kilowatt hours lithium ion pack. The fast 480 kilowatts charging will be fully utilized by the 98 kilowatt hours Li Ion pack. However, it is unknown what speed the LFP pack will be able to accomplish. The Spang G9 is an SUV with a stylish appearance that does not sacrifice an SUV coupe roof, providing a lot of rear space, including headroom and legroom. Comfort level sitting stationary and it make me feel it will exceed the P7 by some length. If you're a fan of the P7 sedan but prefer an SUV, then the Spang G9 has got you covered. The Spang G9's price is the one remaining drawback. Spang positions it as the best SUV for under 500,000 RMB, about $73,000, competing with models like the NIO ES7 and Li Auto L9. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and subscribe for more following videos.